In my earlier years in photography, I had this great advice from one of my friends where I was trying to mimic someone's grade. I was even constantly in their DMs going like, oh, bro, how did you do this? How did you do that? How did you get this grade and whatnot? And all he said was, go and do it yourself, right? But I got this advice from a friend closer to him who mentioned that these photographers, where they were a group of photographers, these photographers do what we call selective coloring. I mean, I was new to photography. I didn't understand what selective coloring was. I wasn't even really deep into color grading, but yeah, they said my colors were nice back then when I was doing what I thought was good. You know, fast forward, it's five years or six years from then, and I have more knowledge with respect to color grading. And looking back at what he said about selective coloring, I realized that's what I've been doing all this while, right? So in today's video, we'll be looking at color grading this image in Lightroom. I made a video about Capture One color grading a previous video I shot in the studio with lovely model Lemony. I've also made a video about this particular model. I just didn't make any editing video about her. So there's another color grading video, but in Lightroom, the previous one was in Capture One. You saw how I tackled that. Here in Lightroom, I'll be specifically talking about selective color grading. Selective color grading is more or less looking at the colors you want to see in your frame, keep it there, and the colors you don't want to see in your frame, remove them. It's quite accurate when you jump into Photoshop with a particular adjustment tool called selective color. So generally, we are going to use the idea of selective coloring in color green in this image I shot. I'll provide a link up here, a card up here to go and watch how I did that with or how I achieved this image with LED lighting. So, I mean, my outline for my Lightroom is quite different from what you guys see all the time. You can right click and customize your desktop, your develop panel. That's how I've done mine. I like to have my transform first just because I have to fix and crop my image as you saw me do when I was in there. Then there's a calibration that has to deal with the colors I want to see, the colors I don't want to see with respect to how they were registered on the camera sensor. And my basic, of course, you know where the adjustments are, color mixer, tone curve. You might wonder why the color mixer comes after the tone curve. If you've watched any of my Lightroom videos previously, I always say color grading starts from your HSL tab and your HSL tab has been renamed to Color Mix. I'm using the latest version of Lightroom Classic and you can see the lens blur be a new feature, lens correction. I mean, this is my outline or yeah, my develop panel. I've customized it to fit my needs whenever I decide I'm editing in Lightroom. All right, so immediately I crop, you see me do transform. When I turn it off, it kind of warps the image into perspective. I shot this with a Canon 5D Mark, IV, sorry, an EOS R 50 MMS 1.8 lens, 1250 ISO f2.2 at 1 over 160 shutter speed. Beautiful. I love this image. The lights and the setting, everything works in perfection. When I talk about selective coloring, color grading is more or less moving an image, enhancing an image with the color theory. Color theory deals with color harmony, color temperature, color um, wheel, and color psychology. You should have knowledge with respect to what the color theory is all about. It's more or less telling a story with color. And these colors have relationships with each other. When you talk about color harmony, color harmony has a lot of rules. That's where the rules come in. Analogous, complementary, split complementary. Most of the times, even editing softwares like Lightroom use what we call split, um, complementary colors. So you see, complementary for red is cyan, complementary for green is magenta, complementary for blue is yellow. And the list goes on and on. So take it, take a moment, go look at what a color wheel is. I think it has 32 colors, if I'm not wrong. You know, there are primary colors, there are secondary colors, there are tertiary colors. So we'll start from the top. I've done my transform. I'll skip the calibration and come to my basic. What I do is change my 
profile from Adobe Color to Camera Standard to get back my contrast, to get back my punchiness, to get back some color. All right. You always have to adjust your exposure settings when you are coming to color grade because then you are coming to enhance the tones in the image with respect to color. After doing that, changing this profile to camera standard version 2 for USR, I see a lot of color in there. So I reduce my saturation to, I think, minus 16 should be good, right? What I also do is I like to do a quick before and after whilst I'm editing, just so that I don't sway too far away from the Adobe color profile. I mean, we are assuming this is the raw version or camera um, straight out of camera, C-O-S-O-O-C. But this is not even straight out of camera. This is an adjustment made with the Adobe Color, right? Next, I, I, I take a look at my histogram. Let's expose this correctly. By moving the slider on the histogram over here, the sliders in the exposure tab also moves. All right, so I'm going to expose this, open up my shadows just to have some details in there and open up the blacks a little bit. That's fine. Always know that contrast also plays a role when it comes to color grading. So to add contrast to this, this is already contrasting with how dark and moody this is. I'm going to use the dehaze right, to add contrast. What it does for me is it kind of adds color to the image and also remove any black haze in the image. So add a little bit of clarity to this and reduce quite an amount of texture. If you've watched any of my editing videos, you know I usually don't like to keep a lot of sharpness in my image. So I'm going to go into in detail right, and remove the sharpening just to keep the image soft as we go. When it comes to dark skin models, I like to see how melanated they are. I like to see some reds in them. Immediately, you change your camera profile from or your profile and editing software for the Adobe Color to say camera standard. Assuming you're using camera standard, you're going to have some change in color with respect to how the oranges pop out, how you're going to see a lot of yellows. Because, majority of the time, when you're editing camera Canon images in Nitrum, you see quite a number of yellows. Least I forget, I spoke about color temperature when I was talking about what color theory is all about. So color temperature usually refers to how warm or how cold your image looks like. Looking at this, I'm going to say I like where this color temperature is, right? But one thing I want to put out there, like I said, selective coloring. When it comes to dark skin models, you're keen or you're advised to push some blues into the image. So what I'm going to do is to move the temperature slider towards the blue, right? As you can see, even with the temperature, it's using that color harmony rule where there is complementary color, so blue, yellow. So now that I have moved my temperature towards the blues, take notice of the other colors available in the scene. The skin now is setting where I wanted to set with respect to the temperature but also the browns are affected the greens are affected the reds are affected so take notice even the blue outfit is affected the white on the drawer over here is affected the color of the lamp is also being affected so pay attention to all of these color temperature kind of changes the colors of the colors in the image you're editing I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So if I'm cooling it down, what I would then do is to selectively move some colors to the warmth region. I only wanted a cool tone on the model. This is where we do that next. So I come into my color mixer tab and here in my color mixer, previously known as the HSL tab, the new thing here is the point color. I have not really, really used it that much. So let's just stick to color mixer. Now, let's make sure we push some colors. We selectively move some colors into the warm tone just to have a feel of what I'm talking about. The first thing that you do is to pay attention to my reds, oranges, and yellows. These three colors or these three hues make the skin tone mostly. Mostly make the skin tone. Let me correct that. These three hues mostly make the skin tones. So I'm going to adjust them 
in a certain way just to make sure the skin tones pop out right when you color correct your image appropriately you have good skin tones so what i'm doing right now is actually color correcting color correcting is a form of color grading so i'm going to move the hue of the orange towards the reds just so i can have the red tone in my skin so take a look at this before and after let me turn off these two things so i'll zoom in onto her skin quickly do a before and after on the color mixer before and after before and after what i usually do is to move it all the way so you see the transformation when i bring it back all right so minus h should be fine for me a quick before and after as you can see what i then do is to make sure my reds are towards the oranges because i'm trying to unify the skin tone if i move the reds towards the orange and the oranges towards the red they kind of meet in the middle and i like what i'm seeing so let's play with the yellows also you can see where the yellows are in the image that's what i usually do just to move them around and see what's been affected okay so i'm going to make the yellows more reddish taking a look at my background because i want my background to have that reddish tone then with the greens this is more greenish turquoise so you can have the aqua playing a role in there as you can see and the greens also playing a role in there so i'm going to move them towards aqua and i'm going to move the aqua towards the green you know towards the blues to have that turquoise look in there with my blues the blues are affecting the outfit and a little bit of the background as you can see so we are just as we see fit let's see this is a before let's make it a little bit cyanish and that's that let's see with the purple is there any change i think there is so i'm going to send it towards the blues and with the magenta are there any magenta in here nope so we'll keep it as it is then into the saturation we need to harmonize how the colors are looking we don't want them to be too out there so making sure each color sits at a particular situation where it works very well with the other color in there makes a very good color grade that is why i reduce the saturation here just to tone everything down right i'll come back to the vibrance later so let's jump back into my color mixer or oh, you know what let's go to luminance first i want to quickly do this to the eye anything that's dark has quite an amount of saturation to it so when i reduce the luminance of the orange just take a look at it it's dark near my skin but it kind of adds a lot of color to my skin when i lighten it up to the eyes like i said it kind of takes away the saturation but for editing softwares when you light up you add more color when you darken you take away color i have seen this from dodging and burning when i do that in photoshop so what i'm going to do is to make sure my dark skin is quite darkened let's do that to the red also then let's see that for the yellows the yellows i'm going to darken them more just because i want to see the color of the lamp let's see that the green brighten it up turquoise brighten it up blue should you brighten not darken darkening looks good now to saturation i'm going to reduce the saturation of the oranges just to have a very cool saturation with respect to how it works and also i did mention skin zones lie within red orange and yellow i'm going to make sure as i reduce the saturation of the oranges i make an adjustment for the reds also and also for the yellows so let's zoom out and let me see moving given some color to the yellows to make it stand out beautiful with the greens i'm going to leave it there or the aqua yeah that's the aqua i'm looking for to give me that punchiness okay so far this is where we started from and this is where we are i know the warmth has been taken away from the image but then i like it because it makes my skin tones look the way i want them to look 
she looks more dark melanin than this end all right so this is what we have so far from the color mixer before and after before and after okay now that's been done let's come into the tone curve and do some adjustments in here i want you to understand that with the tone curve there's what we call the point curve you have the parametric curve you have red channel green channel and blue channel you can equally color grade with these three channels that you can see over here so in my previous video i did mention how to create a creamy look we're going to do the same here i'm going to create a point here at the shadow point move the highlights towards the yellows right and lift my blacks by adding some blues in there so this is how it looks but not too exaggerated so before and after before and after so we are heading there we are heading there currently we are adding colors into tones we are enhancing the black tones we are enhancing the white tones what you see me do is put a point curve here in the white and in the blacks i add cream or i add yellow to the white and i add blues to the blacks i come back to my point curve which is the rgb then in the mid tones i lift it up a little bit to add some brightness in there so with this it's also another form of adding exposure to your image but but with a tone curve because it's a linear tone curve whatever adjustments you make the repercussions appear in the various tones that are available in the image i hope i made myself clear so this is before that and this is after that beautiful now let's enter into the world of color grid. what i want you to understand is with every image there are I think four tones which i mentioned that they are blacks okay i didn't mention it earlier i just mentioned blacks and whites so they are blacks they are shadows they are mid-tones they are highlights and they are white for color grading you can see the effects in shadows mid-tones and highlights right whenever i come to color grade all the writers i want to color grade my image the first thing i do usually because i shoot with the canon camera is to make sure i add some cyan it can either be bluish cyan or greenish cyan whichever one works for me right the idea is to eliminate the reds in the shadow to control the amount of reds i have in the image so i'm going to go all the way up then move it down to the points i want then i come into my mid source because i've added or i'm trying to eliminate the reds i push some oranges into the mid source and this is where I kind of warm up my image, but it just attacks the mid-tones, right? So let me warm it up and bring it down as I come down. And in the highlights, I'm going to put some greens in there. Warm it up and bring it down. Not forgetting the overall global one. So the global one is where I kind of warm up my image with where I took it out from my temperature. All right, so I bring back the warmth, but I still have my blues within my temperature. So this is what's happening currently. Let's add some warmth in the highlights. Let's do greenish warmth. And we are selling that creamy look. So this is before the color grading, and this is after the color grading before the color grading and after the color grading all right let's come back into my color mixer make some few adjustments let's darken this more then i come back to my basic tab remember i said i'm going to push in some vibrance so what's the difference between saturation and vibrance is that the vibrance looks at the the one color that's kind of peaking with respect to either desaturated or more saturated and the more you increase the vibrance levels or the vibrance slider, the other colors that are not peaking will try and adjust itself to the particular color that's peaking. And when they are on the same level, they all move or they all increase in color. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. But with saturation, saturation doesn't really bother much about what color is peaking or not. It moves the color respectively at the levels they are. 
none of them get to meet each other. They are all at the same level by increasing in color. So what I'm going to do is add some vibrance to this, right? Then if I leave, remember my calibration. So this is what I have learned so far as somebody who likes color grade and particularly in Lightroom. In Lightroom, you have calibration and this calibration changes over time. And currently we have the version six. The shadows, the things you see here only happens to be in the shadows. It's different from the things you see here in your basic tab or your basic adjustments. So when I push some magenta, it's kind of like adding reds to my shadows. It's magenta, all right, but it's kind of adding reds to my shadows. When I move it towards the left, it kind of takes away the reds in my shadows and adds more green my respect to cyan if you get what i mean so i'm gonna add some reds in the shadows plus two should be fine and amongst these primaries when you want to tackle your skin tone green primary is the best way to go so i'm going to change the hue of the green primary which is going to kind of make the melanin look the color i want then either i add some color to it or I take away the color. Either one should work for me. So you can find me somewhere here. So this is before that, and this is after that. Now let's quickly do a before and after. This is where we started from. This is where we are at, and it looks splendid. Let's make some fine tuning to this and the cyan. Let's add some more cyan to this. Right. The more I add reds into the shadows, the more I kind of eliminate it with the cyan. Let me move this to greenish cyan to have that effect. Let me see my blacks. Okay, my blacks are kind of clipping. So I'm going to open them more. Okay, now let's add some grains to this to sell the look. Kind of add some vignettes, midpoints, make it more round and feather it. So in Lightroom, this is how I approach my color grading. All right, so this is what we are looking at. This is before every adjustment made over here. And this is after before and after so i hope you grasp the concept of selective coloring and the little knowledge i have about color theory with respect to color harmony the rules in there everything i did here in color grading is as a result of the knowledge i have in color harmony the rules with respect to color harmony how you know if you want to take out some reds in your image you have to just add some cyan you just have to notice where the colors are in your image right i think that's where most of the people tell me oh how do you know the color is here and all that just know your colors i i mean if you have knowledge of what red looks like if you have knowledge of what yellow looks like if you have knowledge of what magenta purple all the colors available to you look like immediately you pick up an image what i do is i increase the brightness on my screen to see where everything is and the more i pay attention to the image the more i see oh hey there's some sort of magenta in the shadows there's some sort of cyan in the blacks right the more you pay attention the more keen your eye becomes to detecting colors in a scene and that's how it works for me and that's how it's been working for me i'm i'm also learning i keep on learning all the time with respect to how i color grade my images and i hope to become better at majority of them when when the time comes but for now this is my level this is my peak what i can't produce right now as a color grader here in Accra, Ghana. so thank you so much for watching today's video i know black friday is still running for me on my website i did mention use the black friday coupon code black friday if you purchase the products at the checkout option input in black friday 
so that you can get 30% off all my products. Right. I have a lot of Lightroom presets also being sold on my website. I love that T people have been supportive on my channel. I'm going to take off the obtrusive ads for this video also. So make sure you support the channel by buying most of my products. Check down in the description box below a link to my shop labeled the shop. Right. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, share this video to someone who would want to also improve upon their color grading. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.